What is going on, YouTube? Yaw Squad. This is your boy, Yakutis. This is your review for The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Season 13, Episode 5. So we pick up where we left off with, um, <laughs> I'll tell you, look, this is this still tickles me to this day. Name them. Name them. Name them. <laughs> Baby, look, that is going to go down and... Not only one of my top housewives moments, but just like one of my top reality TV show moments. Because the whole being unbothered, being calm, and just name them. <laughs> so, um, Sutton is saying that Kyle seems unhinged. And Kyle asks her, okay, well, what's going on? And Sutton echoes that right back to her. And on one hand, we all know what Sutton was referencing. But Kyle took offense because it's, oh, she must be talking about the rumors. And she got out of there so fast, so swiftly, so expeditiously. But my whole thing is you just came into this woman's house and tried to play her and ask her, is it because it, it was almost like, let's talk about your childhood. Well, let's talk about your childhood. Like, that's really what that was. And if you wasn't ready for that to come back at you, then why you ask her that question? Turn about fair play. But yeah, Kyle, wait, what I said? No, and then, um, and Kyle wants to know what does she mean by that? And then Kyle says, you know, bring it on, babe. I'm glad to, <laughs> to answer any of your questions. And son's like, I'm not bringing it on. Because son is like, what are you talking about? And the fact that she got so quickly defensive, it says everything, right? Kylie's. So now we get Erica and she's with her mama. So her mama Renee drops by. Erica tells us that, you know, visits are like once a year. They're for a couple of days. And then afterwards, they get on each other's nerves. Baby, I understand. That is me <laughs> and my mother. And it doesn't help that I am her tenant and she is my landlord. And I stay in the second floor apartment. She's on the first floor. Doesn't help. But back when I was in the military and I would come home. The first couple of days honeymoon, because like the minimum that I've ever stayed. Well, my father's funeral was the minute well, like I've only was only home for a week, but typically I'm home for two weeks at max a whole month. But typically like that first week, you know, like it, it's it's the honeymoon. By the time we get to the end of the first week, we it's starting to get a little rough. We get to the middle of that second week. We about ready to go at each other. And by the end of it, yeah, we both glad that the other one is that well that I'm leaving, you know. But it's because she and I, we are so much alike. Like I'm the male version of my mom. And also at the same exact time, I don't take the high road like she does in some situations. And I'm just about the shit send the smoke. So yeah. <laughs> There's that. But anyway. Um she uh shares um that you know they were close um because um, they are close like i guess they they have the relationship they have is because they're close in age and i think it's like by 18 years and her mom would um kind of treat her like a little sister so like that's the type of um relationship that they have and that she used to be out partying all the time with her mom which i'm like interesting yeah, I'm going to just leave that alone. So now we get Garcelle, her uh, son, uh, Jay. Uh, he's cooking steak, and I would assume it's for the family. It was several in there, but, I mean, he's a grown boy, so hell, it could have all been for him. Uh, Jade is very protective of his, of his mom. That's what Garcelle tells us. Like, he's the one that is very protective of her. Not Jax. <laughs> and then Garcelle has, you know, created, she well, tells us that she's created space for her children to be able to talk to her about any and everything. And that's because she didn't have that. And you see that a lot with adults where if there was a lack in their um, upbringing, they try to provide that for their children. And sometimes it's even to their detriment to where I didn't have the nicest things growing up. So I'm going to make sure that my child has all of the nicest things. If I ever have kids and again, with all the healing that I'm doing, I don't think that's ever going to happen. <laughs> but if I ever do, for me, it's not necessarily giving them monetarily or physically everything that I didn't have, but emotionally and mentally and psychologically, everything that I didn't have, you know, teaching them all the things that I didn't know and <clears throat> having, you know, that under having someone that is present, understanding attentive you know and allowing them to just be able to speak freely without fear of consequences not having to walk on eggs all of that yeah so i appreciate that from uh garcelle 
And then she shares with Jay that uh, Jax hurt her feelings. And he was just a little thrown by it. Now, they're twins, so it's kind of like, mm, I don't really know about you telling one twin about, you know, the other twin, but okay, we shall see. And Jay doesn't, you know, want more freedom. Like, he just wants his girlfriend to spend the night. I'm like, <laughs> I will say, I, I like this, like, when we actually get to see real moments with the housewives and their children and not these overly manufactured scenes where it's we're trying to present something. Cause again, Jay whole thing is I'm just trying to get my rocks off. <laughs> that, that's all that's on his mind. Hey, bless his heart. Bless his heart. So Garcelle, um, tells us that she couldn't date when she was a teen. It turned into an all out, you know, car chase where she told her mom that she was going to stay at her friend Debbie's house. Now, she's in the car with a dude, so she's driving um, one of her parents' car. I believe it was her mom's car. Dude in the passenger seat. Well, Debbie's mom calls Garcelle's mom like, is Debbie there? And that sent Garcelle's mom, like, her attendant. When I was like, my daughter's supposed to be over. Oh, she lied. <laughs> so then the father got in the car and trailed her, found her, and then she was speeding, running all the red lights. Luckily, they did not get pulled over. Nobody involved. And it was one red light that her father couldn't, you know, um, make or I guess pass through maybe because there was traffic or whatever. And when she got past him, she floored, hurried up, stopped, told him, get out of the car and then drove off. And then the father caught up to her and said, follow me home. Now, we don't know what the aftermath was, but I mean, look, we can just assume. I'm like, ooh, well, that's that's a juicy story. And, it, and this story is like this. I want to hear more of <laughs> color me in treats and you know um we also find out that garcelle ep a uh, movie named um, black girl missing i did see advertising for it and i think it was a couple times that honestly i just ignored Cause only because like i be working so much and doing so much like it like it was on my radar and then it went off my radar but now know there's on Lifetime. I'm going to try to find it so I can watch it because I knew that she was in it. I didn't know that she was an, ex an executive producer. So now I have to watch and support. So now we get Crystal and her family, her uh, children. The children are dismissed. <laughs> and then uh, her and her husband talk about how, you know, Jeff and Rob, Rob is her husband, Jeff is her brother, uh, went to China and Jeff, um, I think at one point, went to see his ex. And Rob says that Jeff hasn't moved on. Uh, he went against what he was feeling to make Crystal and the mom happy because, you know, the panorama happened and, you know, Crystal and her mother was adamant about him coming back to America. And, you know, begrudgingly, he did. And he's engaged, you know, about to soon get married. And his wife, for whatever reason, couldn't join him. And that put a strain and ultimately ended the relationship. And he still feels a way. So Jeff, I'm sorry, Robert telling her like, yeah, he still feels way about that. And Crystal said, oh, well, that's just uh, Chinese culture defending the action. And I'm like, ooh, ooh. And this is a real moment. I don't I don't like the fact that her brother is her storyline, but it's better than nothing because, I mean, really, what has Crystal given us? Not much. And if there is any issues between her and Rob, we ain't going to see it. So, I mean, I guess this is the next best thing. And, um... Rob says maybe, you know, um, this is mo um, not about her and Jeff, but more or less her being in competition with Vivi, which is uh, his uh, ex fiance over Jeff. And I guess, you know, who plays a bigger role in his life or whatever, whatever. And, you know, she just kind of like it is upset that he said it, but kind of fans him off. And she's like, you know, I want to call him. He's like, well, what time is it? And it's like right before noon in china and calls him and his face is puffy or whatnot and she asks him have you been crying and he said yes now right there i would have been like, I'm, I'm gonna call you back <laughs> you, you feel especially like if if because you if you close with your sibling like you don't want that on camera because at this point like your brother is literally vulnerable emotionally and now you got him on facetime for all of us to see and it, it, it really was sad. Like, he was distraught. And Rob, yeah, Rob had even yelled out, you know, uh, Crystal. Wait, what did he say? Because I think I wrote that. What did he say? Mm. Uh, yeah, he blurts out, uh, Crystal uh, feels um, regret. And Jeff uh, just needs time to go talk to Vivian and whatnot. 
And you can see that it tore Chris up just a little bit, but it's like, yeah, you helped to create this. And even though ultimately, yes, he made the decision to do it, but because it was a cultural thing, and probably I'm going to just go out and say it, even though he is a pop star in China, I'm pretty sure like he eats a little bit off of Crystal and it's, mm, do I really want to cut this off? Now, I could be wrong. That's just my thoughts. I'm not saying that it's true. But yeah, yeah. Like, so that, that, that boy's in shambles. I, I feel for him. I really do. So now we get Sutton and her friend Jennifer uh, Tilly. She goes see her uh, horse Santos at a riding club. You know, they briefly talk about Kyle. And Sutton mentions, you know, well, Kyle, um, her size is different. She's eating differently. She's not drinking a whole lot. She's not just exercising, but she's exercising a crazy amount. Now, again, if she was going into like a fitness competition, that would be a, like, I would like, I think we all would understand. Or if she was trying to get particularly toned for a movie role, we would understand. It ain't none of that. So, of course, it's the whole, okay. They like they not friends, friends, but they co-worker friends. So it's OK. I clearly see something that's going on. What it is. And then you're not wearing your red wedding band. Some going on like the, the math ain't math. And it's pretty much what Sutton is trying to say. So now we get Erica back with her mom. And, you know, they talk about her on Broadway. And Erica's whole thing is, yeah, I was on Broadway and you just popped up and we ain't been talking. And then the mom was talking to you like, and then Eric's like, no, it's because you hung up on me. And I was like, no, you hung up on me. And then Eric's like, yeah, yeah, that's because you were talking about something that, you know, I didn't want to talk about that. On one hand, I felt like this was somewhat rehearsed looking at the eye movement somewhat, not really, but just going along with it. Because, again, I could be wrong, but just going through the whole motions and the whole thing is you brought up something that I didn't want to talk about. Now, I wonder if she told her I didn't want to talk about it. The mom kept talking about it, and then she hung up. I don't know. But uh, at one point, present day, while they're conversing, uh, Mama Renee is just like, so how many times did you go to a law firm? And Erica shuts that down so quick. And the mom was like, all right. Because <laughs> I guess the mom was just like, look, she already hung up on me. If I keep going, she's probably going to put me out the house. So let me just, okay. Um, Let's see. Da, 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 da. So I talked about that. And Erica says, uh, you know, that she is happy. Everything is pretty much behind her now with the time stuff. And then Ma Renee says she brought paints. <laughs> and Erica just puts her head down just like, and pretty much says, like, I am so glad this is almost over. <laughs> I, I understand the frustration. I do. So we get Dorit and Kyle talking and then Sutton and Garcelle talking, all of them getting ready to um, go to the um, movie screening. And then um, and it's they're pretty much talking about Kyle versus Sutton. And Kyle's thing is Sutton was um, asking what was going on, like, you know, doing the digging and whatnot. And then Dorit says, oh, that sounds like a threat. Really, Dorit? R really, Dorit, that that sounds like a threat. How is a question? Uh, no, no, let, let me no, let me not say that because sometimes a question could be a threat. But her is asking what's going on when all she did was throw the question right back. Like, y'all need to stop playing. And Dori doesn't like the fact that she's going to be riding with Sutton, especially following all of this. Sutton has a, um, a photographer, I'm going to say a philosophy, a photographer at her house, you know, taking pictures of her. She even had one when she went to meet with her horse because, you know, we're in the digital age. And if you really want to drive sales and whatnot, you need to have a social media presence. So doing this photo op and all the other stuff. And Dorit is so upset because she is just left waiting for sudden. But it's like, mm, so you don't like when the table turn. Cause, and that's one thing I find funny about Dorit is Dorit does a lot of stuff to people. And don't see a problem with it, but as soon as they do it back to her, it's the worst thing ever because there have been many times that she's done. I believe they were maybe like on a ski trip one time and she showed up late and even had a fashion moment as she showed up late. Again, miss me again. What, what is Dorit bringing? I mean, because again, we we see little, little sparks of the old Dorit, but she ain't bringing nothing. I still don't know what her storyline is at all. But I'm going to move on. So now we get the black girl missing screening. Doree finds out that the screening is not intimate, but 
is going to be like over 100 people, which for something such as this, that still is intimate, but whatever. And, you know, this may uh, trigger, you know, her PTSD because she isn't prepared. And I don't think that's what it is. I think that she knows that Garcelle is probably going to want to talk to me about what happened in Vegas. And now that I know there's going to be a lot of people there, I can use this as a way to garner sympathy. Look, I, I, I'm I, sorry. I do. I see the worst in people a lot of the time, and I just can't help it. And for something such as that, you were just in Vegas with, with people all around you. And y'all real shit? Mm-mm. Let's, let's, let's stay on task. Anyway, so Jax is um nervous because Erica is there. And decides to bring Crystal as backup to go talk to Erica. And Crystal even feels like, you know, like felt good that he felt comfortable enough with her to come. But at the same exact time, when Erica was telling him to get the F out, she was kind of, you know, like um, comforting him. And, you know, just and even saying, like, you know, she's stupid, don't pay her mind, da, da, da. So there's some comfort there, which is great. I like that. And Crystal wants people to see Erica we'll see the Erica that she got to see when they was in Vegas. So she doesn't mind going over there with Jax. And, and my thing is you want them to see this version of Erica, but you've seen Erica. You saw Erica a lot last season and Erica was on your, mm, like white on rice last season, but okay. It'd be different if everybody was hell bent on misunderstanding Erica and you want them to see the genuineness that is there. That's one thing. Right now, we're getting Erica doing damage control. But that ain't none of my business. So, Jax let Erica know that, you know what? Everything is okay. It is what it is. It's water under the bridge. Which, again, he is a class act. Because Erica said he's a class act. He is. He is. Um, I can't say that I would have did that. I, I ain't even going to lie to you. I ain't even going to hold you on there. I can't even tell you that I would. Okay. And Erica then apologize and say, you know, I said this to your mom, but I'm going to say it to you. Da, 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 da. And I'm sitting there and I start this and what's her name? Garcelle uh, echoed it, which I'm glad because my thing is it should never be that a child has to approach an adult to have to sit here and make stuff right when the child wasn't the one that was in the wrong. And both Garcelle and I felt like Erica should have been the one, whether it be when they started back filming this season where is she asked ourselves hey can me you and jack sit down almost like uh what's her name jennifer shaw did with meredith and um her son marks how they all had a little lurching something to that effect where you could have had a whole moment then whatever whatever or when you or when you saw him at this event her be like hey young man can, can i pull you to the side really quickly i'm also da 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 but it took him to have to do it. So kudos to him. I tip my head and everything to him. It just wouldn't have been me. Uh, so Denise Richards shows up. And as the movie is like beginning to play. And from what I've heard. No one to include Garcelle. Not even production knew that she was coming. She wasn't even mic'd up. So this was just a surprise. I'm popping up. Because I was even looking at Denise. Just like you're not even dressed for the occasion. <laughs> but. Okay, again, I dress very plain, so I'm not judging in that aspect, but it was like, oh, well, all right, she's just showing up casually. <laughs> okay. Um, Denise greets Crystal and Doree, and then at some point she goes to greet Erica, but you can tell that Doree, Erica, and we haven't seen her interact with Kyle, but Kyle is not feeling her. I can't wait to see her bring Camille next episode. Like, c- c- come on, Denise. Come on, since, since they wanted to play with you, your last um, time on here, c- c- come on through. I just needed for Camille to bring the medium, the psychic, whatever. She, I ain't trying to disrespect whatever her title. I We just needed her to be that one good time for the good time, but all right. So Sutton goes to talk to Kyle. Kyle says um, um, Sutton was being aggressive, and I, I didn't like that I re- because Sutton wasn't being aggressive because all of a sudden, one, it was clear that she like name him. Name them. Name them. She ain't even getting loud. It was just. <laughs> it's still so funny. To me. I got to watch that back. Name them. <laughs> Kyle was the one that was being ignorant and belligerent. 
And then Sun says, you know, Kyle is starting up right now and that she is and that, you know, I was calm during our last interaction. Kyle doesn't think so, which Kyle, you're full of it and says, you know, Sutton was off and Sutton, you know, says it back to her. OK, well, you seem off. And then that is when uh, Kyle feels like Sutton is trying to come at her and ask her to just say it. And it's, no, you feel guilty because you feel that this is what she wanted to say. And I really don't like the way that she comes at Sutton. Plus, if Kyle was smart, she would have got ahead of the story and then just shut everything down rather than let somebody, you know, spin the narrative for her. But it's so funny how when it comes to anybody else, Kyle along with her little click, be so quick to want to air out everybody else's stuff. But when it comes to her, you got to be mom's the word. Okay, because again, outside of her beefing with her sisters, let's be honest, what has Kyle really brought to this show? If she not beefing with one of her sisters, she's letting somebody attack one of her sisters. If she's not attacking one of her sisters, you know, it's I'm in your business trying to get the tea because I don't want y'all in my business. That's it. So, let me see. Sudden at, um, says, as a friend... Can I not ask you, you know, are you okay and everything? And Kyle says, okay, you're full of it. And Sutton says to her, there seems to be a lack of respect. You treat me like a little sister. Kyle interrupts her and says, don't flatter yourself. And then she says, excuse me, these are my feelings. Are you mad about the Kathy thing? And Kyle says, no, but she's full of it. She, now she's the one that's full of it because you are. You're mad because you're on the outs with your sister and your castmates, Garcella and Sutton, are still chummy chummy with your sister and it hurts and it burns. You know you mad. You know you mad. <clears throat> and then Cal brings up the rumors and Sutton says, you know, there is a physical difference, but there something else is off. And Cal chooses to say nothing. She's mums the word. But the whole time it was bring it, say all this other stuff. And then when she says that, yeah, there's a physical change in you, then not drinking all this other stuff, but there's something else there. You don't have nothing to say. Okay. And then we, well, we really didn't end here, but I'm ending here. Garcelle pulls the re outside and Garcelle says, when I open up to you now, Ashley, first, before this, let me, let me back up two steps. Step one is <clears throat> when the re first got there, she's all jumpy and everything you know, being very performative, trying to make it seem like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, because that was her way of trying to get Garcelle to not even want to bring anything up, just based off of that alone. And then when Garcelle puts her outside, she's like, oh, you did such a great job, and, and da, 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 trying to butter her up, trying to keep the conversation from going where I think she knew that it was going to go. But Garcelle says, when I opened up to you, you got so defensive, you know, you didn't hear me. And actually, she did hear you. She just wasn't listening to you. She was hearing, you know, she was hearing to respond, but not listening to understand. But nevertheless, and she says, I don't she like I know Erica was drunk, but you didn't reprimand her in that moment, not only based off of what she was able to see, but what she was able to see via the playback. And Dorit did. And Dorit feels that every time they move forward, they move backwards. Now, here's Dorit not acknowledging none of what Garcelle just says. Well, I feel like every time we move, like, it, and I, ooh, that, ooh, that gets me. And Garcelle agrees and says she feels her children are disregarded, which they are. And Dorit says, you know, she should have paused in that moment. It don't matter what you should have done, because doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Damage is done. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. You have the gun. If y'all know the reference, let me know that reference. But anyway, and Garcelle brings up, you know, Doris saying that it's been over. Here. She's like, no, 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 help you said it. You, you said it, Huzzy. <clears throat> and then, and she was, and she was like, I would never say something like that to you. Like, like for me to say, like you were robbed, and you know, it's been so long ago. You should be over it. Like it's, it's very insensitive. And Doree says she's sorry. And I mean, ultimately, that's all that happened. We know we're not going to get a whole lot out of Doree. I gave y'all more than what this episode required, but that's neither here nor there. But that is all that I have. Y'all know that you will have Miami up right after this. Hell, this might go up before Miami because I literally just record these back to back and then just let them upload. So whatever. But don't forget to. Oh, wait a minute. 
Wait, the panel over here today. Oh, <laughs> I totally forgot. I got to get that ready. The panel will be over here tomorrow. <laughs> It'll be here at the Citadel. I totally forgot. I, I totally did. Because, again, I keep forgetting JoJo's like not like he's here in spirit, but he's not really here. So, yeah, be back here for the panel. I have to get everything set up for that. And, yeah, be back later tonight or right after this for Miami. And also, actually, later tonight, tonight. For Potomac. So I'll see y'all then. Rate, come, subscribe, and share. Talk to you guys later. Bye.